How would I describe the show? It is a musical comedy, in the old sense of the word, but with very uh, strong farcical elements, more so than typical. I mean, you're running, pushing around a dead body all night, sort of. You wouldn't go towards me. I mean, you could turn and face the curtain and so it go off. I want you all, when you come in now, to the beginning, to all have movie theater candy. Ugh. Like intermission. Intermission, oh. you were having candy or a snack. So you're running there. Hide it behind your back. Something funny is going on and the claws move faster. I love that we're a family. I love performing. I love... I just... It's, it's a lot of fun. You know what I mean? Like, we come here and... The show itself is fun, like I said, you know, that it, it's just funny for people to watch, but it's fun for us to do as well. And then when we're having a good time on stage, that makes a better show for the audience. So it's just, it's a whole big bottle of fun. Jeez, that it's a hard process. And, you know, we have people from a wide range of comic comedic instincts. Some people have very good timing, and some people that you have to actually train them to learn the timing. And they actually learn it by count two, wait two, wait one, turn your head this way, turn your head that way. I hate to have to do that, but there are times you have to do it as a director and say. Uh, luckily, with this cast, we have a lot of people that instinctively know what to do. And there are moments in the show where I just said, do your own thing, and they did it so well I didn't have to say anything other than just do the song. The first one needs to be loud, and the second one's the whisper one. Okay. Then it backs. The first one turned at Mr. Witherspoon. Loud. Okay. And acting is more than just doing the lines. The, the whole idea of acting is reacting. So you have to have that time to practice and work with another person so that your conversation is a conversation. It's not just, I know my lines and I'm reciting them, but it's a real conversation. And that's when it's real, even if it's silly and like heightened reality. When it's real, that's when it's good. The biggest thing that I've seen is the time availability of the people. Um, in professional theater, you have everybody all day, every day, and they're just rested and relaxed and ready for rehearsal. And in community theater, everybody's rushing from school or work or something else. So you have to be very careful of their management of their time, and you also have to be careful of um, uh, making sure that they've, the time that you've, they've, you've given, they've given you has been well spent. It's nice sometimes to step away and be somebody else. Like, and then through that, you, you can discover things about yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I guess lots of different characters and every character that I've played has pieces of me in them for sure. Um, being able to kind of analyze other personalities that aren't your friends, so you're annoying them by analyzing them. Um, you know, analyze these other personalities and, and see what's similar and see what's different. I guess it kind of gives you a clearer picture as to who you are. My forte or secret weapon is taking the less skilled people and making them look good on stage. You know, it's easy to make people that come in with all the skills look good because they already know how to do it. But it's taking somebody that doesn't know much of anything and training them on how to do it so they fit in and it's a, a, seamless, a seamless show for everybody. I think that's my best asset as a director because a lot some directors overlook that they only want to work with trained professionals so. Do not